Good morning. Welcome to Shepherd of the Mountains, and welcome to a new church year as we begin the season of Advent, looking forward to our Savior's coming. Our order of service is in your service folder, and our opening hymn is, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Protect us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. What is the most dangerous thing that you can imagine? It might depend on how old we are. Some of us, when we're kids, we're afraid of a monster under a bed. Any of you guys afraid of that? Probably not, huh? Maybe a little. But as we get older, we know about more things that could be dangerous and things that we might be afraid of. But today in the prayer that we just prayed, what did we pray that God would protect us from? You see it there? The dangers of our sins. Do you know why sin is so dangerous? Because it can keep us away from God. It separates us from him and from other people, too. Well, how does God protect us from the dangers of our sins? He forgives those sins. He takes those most dangerous things away from us. And he makes us his holy people. Today, as we listen to God's word, let's listen to the dangers that God saves us from. And let's remember how he has protected us now and always from our sins. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for coming down, for coming to protect us and save us. Lord, there may be many scary things to us in this world but nothing is more frightening and more dangerous to us than being separated from you forever. But you have forgiven our sins, and we thank you for that. Keep forgiving us 
and help us to always remember what you've done to keep us with you. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapters 63 and 64. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your inheritance. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the words of Jesus. The Holy Gospel from the Gospel of Mark 13. Jesus speaks. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. The hymn of the day, Savior of the Nations, come.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Watch out. When I say those words to you, how do they make you feel? Maybe like something bad is about to happen, so you should be afraid. Or maybe like something good is about to happen, and so you should be excited. Maybe it's both. Like something good is going to happen to you, but if you're not paying attention to it, you'll miss it, which would be bad. Every Sunday, toward the beginning of our service, we pray a prayer called the prayer of the day. During the season of Advent, the prayers of the day all ask God to stir something up. Either his power or our hearts. Well, during Advent, we're going to take our cue from those prayers of the day. And in each of the sermons on Sundays, we're going to ask the Lord to stir us up. Today, looking at the gospel of the day from Mark chapter 13, we ask the Lord, stir us up, Lord, to watch for you. Jesus was teaching his disciples to watch out for his coming. He had already come once, of course. He had been born into the world and, and was standing there among them in the world, teaching them about his second coming. His teaching would be so important for his followers because otherwise he knew that they would miss his coming. That's what had happened to so many people at Jesus' first coming already. Even though God had used all of the teaching in the entire Old Testament to try to prepare the people for his first coming, so many had missed it. They'd been distracted by other things and hadn't been watching for him. And now he was standing there in the middle of Jerusalem, the Son of God himself, and so many people missed him for who he truly was. Jesus didn't want his disciples to miss his second coming. And so he was teaching them. And every word that he taught those first disciples applies equally to you and me. He even said it in the gospel about how what he was saying to them, he was saying to all people. He calls you and me too to watch. Wouldn't it be easier, though, to watch for Jesus' second coming when he returns to this world if he would simply tell us when it's going to be? Then we would all be watching on that day, wouldn't we? But just the opposite. Jesus says that nobody knows the day or the hour. Nobody has any idea when it will be when he comes again. Why do you think that is? This information about Jesus' second coming is so secret that not even the angels of heaven know it. Jesus himself didn't even know it as he was walking this earth. It's private because Jesus knows, God the Father knows, that if you and I did know when his second coming would be, 
we wouldn't stand a chance of being ready. We would treat his second coming like we treat most other deadlines. Oh, Jesus says that I'm supposed to be ready at such and such a time on such and such a day. Well, then I'll start getting myself ready, start watching for him earlier that day, or maybe even the night before, just to be safe. But watching for Jesus coming isn't like cramming for a test. If it's not a priority at all times, then it will never be a priority. If we are ever going to be ready for his coming, we must always be ready for his coming. And so Jesus tells us always to watch. He tells us a little story about what it's like for us as we watch for his coming. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he said that it was like he was a man leaving his house to go on a journey. And he told the person whose job it was to guard the door of his house to watch for him to come back. Well, you and I are like Jesus' doormen and door women at his house because he's calling on us to watch. And we don't want him to catch us napping when he comes back. He's not telling us that we can never get any sleep. His point is that whether we are awake or asleep, we are always watching and ready for him to come back. Watch out. It's a warning. Don't be distracted. We need Jesus' warning because it is so easy for us to get distracted. That's why we're observing Advent right now. As we look forward to the celebration of Jesus' first coming at Christmas, we need something like Advent to get us ready. There are many people around us who are saying that they're already celebrating the Christmas season but it's ironic because even though they're literally saying the name Christ every time they say the word Christmas, they are distracted from the fact that Christmas is all about Jesus' first coming. So that's why we celebrate Advent, too. Advent keeps our focus on Christ, on the reason that he came that first time. You're probably already started to listen to some Christmas music and decorate your homes. Celebrating Advent doesn't mean you can't do any of that. But what it does mean is that we keep at the forefront of our minds why Jesus came. Well, if it's so easy to get distracted from the reason for Jesus' first coming, then we'd have to agree that it's also very easy to get distracted from his coming again. There are a lot of things that get in the way, and distract us. Some of them are our sins. The behaviors in which we want to indulge ourselves. And we think that we'll get away with them because we'll only do them for a little while and then we'll clean up our act before Jesus comes again and sees us. 
Some of the distractions, though, are even good things. Like our families, or our homes, or all of the activities on our busy schedules. Many of these are good blessings from God. But we can even turn God's blessings into distractions when we put all of our focus and attention on them and fail to watch for Jesus coming. But it's so important that we watch. If you're watching a movie at home and you get distracted and you miss something important, you can probably just rewind and watch again. But if you are driving a car and you get distracted, you might crash that car and lose your life. Sometimes distractions aren't that big of a problem, but other times they are serious problems. And today Jesus tells us that getting distracted from his second coming is extremely dangerous. Jesus tells us that he's coming. Coming to bless us. But if we get distracted from what he is coming to do for us and focus on everything else in our lives, then we won't be ready to receive his blessings. We won't be ready to go with him to heaven. And instead, we'll die and go to hell. Watch out! It's a serious warning. But it's also a gracious invitation and a good and kind promise from God to you. Jesus is coming again, but the reason that he comes is because he wants to take you to see and experience all the blessings that he came to win for you the first time that he came. When Jesus was born at the first Christmas, he didn't just come so that he could teach us. He came to save us. He didn't let anything distract him from that. And as we watch Jesus' life and work through the words of the Bible, we see that all throughout his life and in his death and in his resurrection, he did save us from our sins. He earned forgiveness and life for us. He promises us now that he's coming again to take us to enjoy all of those blessings with him in life that never ever ends. You may have already heard that threat and promise to watch out recently. If you've watched television or listened to the radio or gone into a store, I bet you've heard it. If not yet, maybe soon. It's one of the popular Christmas songs, and it says, you better watch out. And then it goes off to list other things that you better not do. What's the reason? Because Santa Claus is coming to town. If you listen to that song, though, 
And if you take it seriously, you'd have to come to the conclusion that it really is more of a threat than a promise. Certainly, it it says that he's coming to bring good gifts, but if you don't do what you have to do to get them, you'll miss out. But when Jesus speaks to us in his word today about his coming, he's giving us something that is far more strong of a promise than a threat. Because Jesus doesn't say that you have to do a single thing to earn anything from him. He's already done everything for you. That's why he came the first time. And now in his coming again, there's no list of demands of what you need to do or not do. It's all done. Simply watch for him. And as he speaks his word to you, he's continuing to do everything to get you ready for that coming, to get you ready to see his gifts. He's coming to take you to enjoy them. If it were just up to you and me to get ourselves ready and keep ourselves watching, we'd miss it. We wouldn't be ready. We'd lose it all. But Jesus speaks to us in his word to prepare us, to keep us watching. And so, that's our prayer today. That the Lord would work in us and get us ready for his coming. Both our celebration of his first coming at Christmas and for his coming again. So we pray, stir us up, Lord, to watch for you. Amen. And we join to confess our Christian faith in the God for whom we watch with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And we pray. Dear Savior, we pray that you would come. Come and work in us through your promises as you spoke to your ancient people throughout their time of waiting and watching. Come and restore our hope. Wake us up from the slumber of despair Lift our hearts from all of the distractions in this world 
and direct our eyes heavenward from where you will come and make all things right again. Come and work in us repentance, sorrow over our sins. Forgive us for all of the ways that we have dealt with each other and that we have treated you. Through your mighty word, stir up in us a ceaseless desire to give ourselves to others as you have given yourself to us. Come also to rekindle our joy as we prepare to celebrate your first coming. Don't let any distractions take away your peace and deprive us, deprive, deprive us of opportunities to ponder your love for us. Set our hearts apart from all of the distractions in this world and give us delight in finding you and your promises in Bethlehem. We pray for all of those who are enduring sorrow, who are undergoing trials, who are restless or sick or going through any suffering at this time. Comfort them, strengthen them, and illumine them with the sweet peace that comes from your love and keep them in that peace by your word. Come quickly, Lord, and fill our longing eyes with the light of your coming. We wait, we keep watch. In you we put our hope. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who comes with his Father to make his home in human hearts, working repentance and faith by his Spirit until he comes again. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord, of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, he fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. We now invite all communicant members of Shepherd of the Mountains, as well as members of churches in fellowship with our Wisconsin Synod, to come forward and receive Christ's true body and blood.
and we'll continue with our closing prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. You may have noticed that there was a little hole in our service toward the beginning. We didn't read from the epistles or have a psalm for today. Those will be the focus. Today's psalm and epistle reading will be our focus for our midweek Advent service this, this coming Wednesday. You're, you're welcome to join us for that, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, as we have these extra opportunities to prepare our hearts to meet our Savior. Uh, those will, that will will be our focus as we continue to get ready for for advent and christmas here just just wait a second joe wait till the announcements are done thanks uh we're going to decorate our church for for advent and christmas here this coming saturday um do we have an official start time for that i know it's going to be work day as well as decorating so it'll be a a lot, of, a lot of stuff to do around here. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for making a decision on that one. That's what we needed. <laughs> I, I'm sure there will be guys working around here as early as 8, but probably into the afternoon. So just come when you can to help out if you'd like to do that. Uh, there's a beautiful Christmas tree fresh from the, from the forest uh, out behind church, just waiting to to be put up here in church. So love your help with all the decorating to go with that. Uh, then Christmas for Kids is the following Saturday, the 12th. And there are some flyers available in the Narthex for you if you would like to uh, help us get the word out about this. Um, we're going to follow all the protocols as far as... Uh, keeping our distance and wearing our masks and keeping the groups small, which is why instead of having one uh, full-length session, we're dividing into two shorter sessions for that. But all the information is on this flyer. So if, if you'd want to post it up somewhere or hand it out to somebody, you, you're welcome to take as many as you want. Um, we'd, we'd love to share the word of, of Christmas with our community even in, in this difficult time. And then I have one more thing to share with you. Uh, it's, a, it's a note from Pastor and Mrs. Waterstrot. Uh, we um, have been praying for them and uh, gave them a gift to help them as uh, Ellen Waterstrot was undergoing surgery for her Parkinson's disease. And uh, this, is, this is the note they've written to us. We've searched and searched for words to express our thanks for all your kindness. When a group of Christians are so helpful, kind, generous, and loving, well, you want to say just the right thing. We'll do our best, but we're sure it'll fall short of how we truly feel. Thank you for your love. It is such a joy to be a part of this family of believers known as the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. I'll have to confess that I often feel like our synod is uh, something to do with vacancies and calls and mission offerings, etc., But there's a special element in each one of these things. Sometimes it's easily overlooked. The wells isn't just a structure for administration. It's people, saints loved and cared for by God and loving and caring for each other. The special gift you sent along with your encouraging thoughts and prayers is a glorious reminder of the joys of this fellowship we share. Your generosity is stunning and we are simply overwhelmed. By God's grace, Ellen's surgery was an amazing success. As we talked on our way back home from the hospital, both of us wondered 
How can we let everybody at Shepherd of the Mountains know how we feel? Words can slip from the tongue so easily at times, but this is not one of those times. From our family to the saints at Shepherd of the Mountains, thank you. Your brother and sister in Christ, Pastor and Ellen Waterstraw. Continue to keep them in your prayers, as I'm sure there will be struggles ahead. Uh, but um, I think uh, elsewhere I heard, heard Pastor Waterstrat say that prior to the surgery, the surgeon told them that uh, the best they could pray for would be an 80% um, control of her, her symptoms from the Parkinson's. And, and actually what they say now is that they achieved 100% control of that. So that's, that truly is amazing, how the Lord blessed that surgery. And so there's lots to give thanks for, um, even as we continue to pray for their blessing. And I pray for, for your blessing all this week as you continue to watch for your Savior. God keep you in his grace.